Welcome back, listeners, to Lost in Postulation. What you just heard is the intro music uh, from our esteemed colleague, whose name I don't remember, but I am joined by, as always, a man who's lathered up in 50 SPF, rolling around the city in shorts today and fully caffeinated. It's Neil Fitzpatrick. Thank you. I have some fact checking to do for you here. But oh, do we? Yeah, yeah. But let me let me come back to that first and foremost. The music, that's the first time we've actually ever referenced the music in the episode, I think. Acknowledged. How yeah. We got some, I think people have reacted well to the music before as well. Yeah. It's it, stock it, music. It's, it's, I was asked, was it me that made the music? No, it's not. I wish it was. <laughs> I wish I was that good. But uh, it's nice. It's jaunty. It has a nice. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, while we, while we go through the episode, maybe during one of the breaks, I'm going to give a proper shout out to, to our man there who's, whose name. Yeah. Alludes Alludes at the you, moment. But isn't it called? It's called Enough Said. That's the Enough name of the Said track. Enough Said is the name of the tune of yeah, the track. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, at one point we can even put the the full integral three and a half minute version. Yeah, in. it goes places. It evolves. Yeah, it's, absolutely. Uh, we we tend to use just the start, but it uh, it has a lot going on. That yeah. Enough Said. Yeah. But to, to quickly <laughs> fact check some of your uh, do. aspirations there. So I'm actually not wearing any sun cream today, and it is for the listener who who doesn't know in Ooh. in Copenhagen today it's 25 degrees outside, which for me is is top that's tier. That's Celsius. That's, that's a yeah. red zone for me though. <laughs> yeah. Literally, like I will be turning red if You're I stay lame. out there. Uh, however, I'm, I'm wearing a new white t-shirt, right? Right. From Uniqlo. And what I found from is- Uniqlo. Yeah, shout out to big Fast shout out. Retail. Love Uniqlo. But uh, what I've noticed is if you combine a white t-shirt with sun cream, say goodbye to your white t-shirt because it's going to be yellow the next time you see it. it uh, that's why it happens. 100%. So- what I've what I decided today was: Can I strategically walk in the shade while walking around Copenhagen, doing my doing my chores, mm. and just avoid sun cream altogether? And okay, you know, if I, if in the future I do need to wear sun cream, I'll I'll wear a black t shirt or you know something mm. else because it seems to just be the white t shirts that get absolutely that get the yellow destroyed. But what about? on your forearms or on your face because even then that's the problem because imagine it's on your face i wipe yeah. my face with my hand and then i just you touch your shirt if, at some point it, forget about it game oh, over okay so i've been I've, i have kind of a love-hate relationship with with the sun cream as we know like i okay i burn it instantly so i do need it but yeah. it just kind of ruins everything because i thought the yellow was just you know from from the sweat etc but maybe it's accentuated by uh, i think the it's sun cream. i think that's it's a sun cream point. all the way because i and have to throw them out after the yeah. summer season every year i've tried i've tried bleaching i've soaked them in bleach i've them and every, like I, I've bought all the things just to try and it's a lot of scrubbing a lot of work and even then it sometimes doesn't work you know mm-hmm. so I'm just like being hyper cautious especially with new stuff where I'm like okay let's get some life out of this t-shirt yeah. you know but uh, so yeah to your point wow. I have been uh, yeah but I have been uh, slugging around Copenhagen today loving it just uh, had a day off I'm uh, just enjoying it it's unreal it's it's great to hear and you mentioned that you got that shirt from Uniqlo as opposed to H&M or Cos. Indeed. Why is that? Not to say that I'm above those places, but I went to Cos as well uh, last weekend mm-hmm. and actually wasn't hugely impressed. Sorry to be, uh, mm. you know, throwing throwing some shade at Cos, but I, <laughs> I, I went through a lot of their stuff because I've heard good things and I've heard their yeah. t-shirts are decent, but um, Uniqlo have these t-shirts that are just like nice quality, nice and heavy. I'm, I'm uh, showing the t-shirt here to yeah, the yeah, for the listener. Um, it's, uh, it just feels good. It feels better and the price is right. So uh, The price is right. Unique. Bob and Marker. I, I feel as though I am... Um, I'm making the Irish listeners jealous because there isn't a Uniqlo in Ireland. So, oh no! Uh, okay. Yeah, I've known Irish people to uh, to dash to the nearest Uniqlo whenever they travel. You know, right? Be that here or or elsewhere. They're big Primark people, are they? Yeah, we do have, as we call it, pennies. Actually, in Ireland, pennies. Yeah, that so sounds affordable. It is very affordable, yeah. and you can you can do well in pennies. But um, it <laughs> is it is like scraping the barrel in terms of quality. That's like okay, you know, it'll fall apart. But. There you go. Still useful. I used to be a Uniqlo enthusiast till a couple of years ago when I came home to Maria and uh, I thought I bought something which was super cool, which mm-hmm. was sweatpants, yeah. which on the outside looked like jeans. Oh, yeah, that does sound controversial. <laughs> and I was quite like, hey, this is cool. This is enthusiastic. I can go out of the house in my sweatpants, which mm-hmm. I usually don't do unless I'm just going to the corner shop in the middle of winter. Okay. Uh, Maria wasn't having it. She actually forced me to go back to the store and return them. Uh, and she continued to then ridicule also the socks and the underwear, etc. that wow. had bought from Uniqlo. And now it's uh, cost all the way, unfortunately. Jeez, fashion police. Yeah, like, I absolutely. mean, you could do a lot worse than cost. I think cost is, is decent, yeah, right? The t-shirts are, are good, like just yeah. very casual wear. And then, I mean, socks anyways, you have to 
get new ones because they have holes every six yeah. months, right? Yeah, yeah. So no, no love lost there. Yeah. Right, right. But yeah, fashion police, uh, Maria. Yeah, yeah, it was it was quite tough because I had had a down jacket from Uniqlo those, those for about good. ten years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those the premium parts of Uniqlo are actually quite good. Mm. You can get a cashmere scarf from Uniqlo, and you'll pay you know you'll pay a fair price for it, but it's right. like actually very very good. Yeah. So next winter, cashmere scarf from are Uniqlo. You, are you gonna roll around in a cashmere scarf? Personally, I don't have one. I've bought them as gifts before. Okay. That's, uh, yeah. Okay. It's uh it's a banger. Very nice. But here we are back postulating once again. It is just so great to be back. It it never ends. And what we have lined up for you today, listeners, is some mundanity as usual to start mm-hmm. things off and then on a new segment which has been well received and which we want to continue going down the rabbit hole of it's google reviews absolutely so uh, i think before we do that let's get into the usual admin we always want Please. to hear always want to hear from the from the loyal listeners don't oh, no, skip I'm, this listeners no 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 don't even think about it this isn't a sponsored part this is just our social media yeah, stuff so i mean show some respect come, come on. on it's the least you can do uh so we can be found on twitter that's at in postulation on twitter you can reach us there you can also reach us by email, I believe, Nicola. Yes, you can. That's a lost in postulation at gmail.com, not dot net, not dot org, not dot IT for the Italian listeners, not dot TV either. No, no, not yet. Right. Funny thing. Do you know what country has gotten very rich off of the domain dot TV? I don't. No, because I was about to guess. The island of Tuvalu, because technically uh. that's allocated to them oh, as a domain address okay, right like dot yeah. es or dot co dot uk yeah, right yeah uh but they've sold that on but yeah, they course. sell on the rights to use it or whatever uh and profit from it to yeah. all the tv companies that want to use it or uh, oh. or tech startups that want to use it is that the same with the ly i don't know what country it would be but there's dot ly and you know like bitly yeah. or sumly or like all, there's it, all these, it must be it, it must, must be belong country. to some country some potentially island. with an l or a small island such yeah. as tuvalu which you know yeah yeah, there's an island called Takalau, which was giving away its domain names for free about 20 years ago. For and, free? Yeah, mm. .tk. So uh, I remember in school, we would just make websites and just be like, <laughs> uh, whatever, Neil is cool .tk. And, and it, like, it, it was, if, <laughs> as a 14-year-old, it felt pretty exciting to have your own uh, website. And free. now it's like, pretty exciting to have your own podcast. It sure is. <laughs> yeah. You could say no, nothing has changed, really. But, no. uh, but there we go. But yeah, that's where you can reach us. And listeners, since you are listening now, if you've gotten this far in the podcast app of your choosing, without even stopping the podcast, you can go and give us a rating review. Mm-hmm. It really helps us to grow the podcast. Seamless review process. And I think you can also interact with us, at least on Spotify. There's some Q&A functions, there's some polls, Absolutely. stuff like that. So just go nuts, go uh, go wild, interact. It's all for you, listeners. It's all for you, for free. For free, how about that? Unbelievable. I actually found out that Spotify, you don't even need a Spotify premium subscription to listen to podcasts on Spotify. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Because I found out my younger brother... Yeah. He doesn't have Spotify Premium, but he listens to podcasts all the time. I don't know. Maybe he has more ads baked in or... But you get ads on Spotify even if you have Spotify Premium because like th- there are ads well, built the, into many... the podcasts baked in. So that's probably yeah. why you don't need to pay for yeah. access to podcasts. And the Premium, I guess, is more for being able to select the music mm-hmm. rather than going to an artist and just getting it automatically on shuffle. But I wouldn't be surprised if some of their big guests on Spotify, like Joe Rogan, when they got him... I bet he's behind a paywall. I bet you need Spotify Premium mm, for that. Okay, that could be. That That's could my be. theory. I could easily check this, but here I am just uh, postulating. Your instead. best friend, idol, and mentor, mm, Joe mm, Rogan. That yeah, is. famously big fan of his. Yeah. yeah, I prefer Seth. Seth Rogan. Yeah, if yeah. I had to pick a Rogan, it wouldn't be Joe, put it that way. Yeah. yeah. Two on, on totally opposite sides of, of every spectrum, those two. I would absolutely, say. absolutely. Although they both enjoy a bit of uh, recreational drug use. So there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And a bit of a laugh, I yeah. guess. Distinctive laughs, at Distinctive least laugh. at least on yeah. one side of the yeah. of the go- of the yeah. aisle. But uh, yeah, huge stuff. Well, and and here we are, Neil. And to kick things off, mundanity, mm. always. And as someone who likes to bridge the divide between us mere theater goers Uh-oh. and those on the stage constantly poking your head out from behind the curtain. Yes. It's great to have you here for this. What an honor. Yeah, we're really digging into my back catalog of hobbies and, and things I've been <laughs> oh, into. Oh, call them hobbies. Yeah. We call them careers. Well, yeah. uh, Failed or not. Failed. Yeah. Um, now, Neil, it seems that everywhere I look, everything is dubbed. Shakespearean nowadays. Mm, like episodes of succession mm-hmm. inspired by Julius Caesar, King Lear, and so on and so forth. 
House of Cards by Macbeth, for example. Uh, whatever you want romantically from Romeo and Juliet. Criticism has come down to that's so Shakespearean and that being, you know, the best possible critique you can mm -hmm. give of something dramatic. But is it really Shakespearean or is it just dramatic considering that Shakespeare did plays about just about every genre which has gone forward? Mm -hmm. Is that how lazy our criticism has begun, or is there some merit behind it? Oh, it's such a such a good question, and I I wish I had like a an hour to postulate as to the many <laughs> facets of these topics. I think there's multiple directions I'll go with because it was a few questions you asked, right? Or kind of two mm -hmm. two divergent questions. And I suppose first and foremost, my theory is that Shakespeare, as both a writer and as a topic, as like a thing, as a concept, has what I would describe as an unbelievably high cultural cachet, if I can use such a, mm -hmm. such a term. Meaning, it, it is very, very hard, especially in an English-speaking country, and I would say broadly anywhere in the world, to find someone who, like Albert Einstein, or like these kind of like top of mind examples, like Titanic, like just are such a touchstone in people's minds for goodness, for greatness in this case, that it's, Titanic it's, is a touchstone for uh, great. Well, the movie is pretty good, but I just mean more that like it's something that is in everyone's head, right? Oh, okay. Like Einstein's the smartest guy, yeah. Usain Bolt's the fastest yeah. guy, uh, you know, Everest is the tallest yeah. man. Like people have these like quite yeah. quite front of mind. So it's it has become a bit of a shorthand, I think, to describe something that's just really good mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. Particularly now, because we've all found out that The Lion King is basically a King Lear adaptation, or we found out that right. Succession is really heavily influenced by it as well. Or like, um, th there's just there's been enough moments now where modern adaptations have been clearly inspired by Shakespeare. Even Romeo and Juliet, the Baz Luhrmann one, is like obviously a direct mm -hmm. uh, right. script uh, translation. Shakespeare and Love, right? Shakespeare and Love, yeah. Oscar winner, Best Picture. And again, you could argue was that due to that cultural cachet that I mentioned right. that. If I would say now, if you could do a movie with Shakespeare in it or about Shakespeare, probably it's it's got, it's on its way to Oscar Town as well, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. because it has such like a wow, it must be good kind of Emperor's New Clothes effect almost. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now what I'm getting what I'm getting towards is a it has a massive cultural cachet and with good reason because it's uh, it's great. Like if you've read whatever you've read of Shakespeare when you've gotten into it, especially through school, etc. I think it's very good and highly influential. Absolutely, and just extremely well written, like mm -hmm. very entertaining, start to finish. So now. As a reviewer, if you're a reviewer and you want to appear to know your stuff and you want to appear to be intelligent, which mm -hmm. we all do, it has become, I think, very tempting as a reviewer to say the shades, shades of Shakespeare and the mm -hmm. script and kind of a Macbethian tragic flaw and his, his ambition is what ruined him. A Lady Macbeth-like figure, you know, these are these such the columnists from the Independence Voice. Among mm -hmm. others, yeah. yeah. But you can just imagine like every Guardian, every Independent, all every, you know, they, they will if ever given the chance at the slightest moment we'll jump into Shakespeare territory like they have with succession over and over and over again so I suppose my to sum up my my kind of meandering answer here I think it's a mix of it, it, rightly so Shakespeare has remained like a massive touchstone for us all and a, an example of what best in class really looks like and he is a direct shortcut to being respected right mm -hmm. maybe i can finish on the i have one more point to, to kind of wrap this Please all up do. when i was a student i worked on something called the dublin shakespeare festival don't bother googling because it, it no longer exists it, it, <laughs> uh, it didn't last very long but uh we did have one good year in the shakespeare festival and what we did was we it was romeo and juliet in the front square of trinity college and tickets were pretty cheap it was like 10 15 euro something like that and we sold out every night of that thing it made hundreds over like six figures let's say mm -hmm. it made mm -hmm. uh in in profit like it was it was an absolute banger i wouldn't necessarily say the performances were particularly amazing of of romeo and juliet but it people flocked to it mm -hmm. and it was it was beyond any of our wildest dreams of like how well it went it was tourists it was locals it was everywhere we did very little marketing or at least no marketing budget went into it it was all word of mouth and it, it just sold itself basically right we had, we had a box office phone that was ringing off the hook every day so I think the point is give people Shakespeare and they will come right now. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's a, it's a cheat code for ticket sales because what do people want to be able to tell their friends, you know, when they're like, Oh, we went to the theater. What did you see? I actually went to uh, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That sounds smart. That sounds you yeah. know respectable. So I think there's like, it's like uh, luxury brands almost, you know, yeah. it's like having your Balenciaga or your, you know, 
what I, I don't know the luxury brands, but like yeah, yeah, but that's a uh, that's a luxury it's brand. Conspicuous consumption, uh, conspicuous consumption. Uh, that's the word. Yeah. So if we were to change our podcast title to Lost in Shakespeare, potentially, indeed, we would grow exponentially. Doth, yeah, the lady doth postulate too much, or some some kind of there a you Shakespearean go. Uh, you with reference. your plays on words. Absolutely. Uh, let's do that for the episode title. Yeah. That'll draw. That'll reel them right yeah. in. Actually, <laughs> let's see. Our listens go through the roof. Who well, did you uh, play in Romeo and Juliet? I never actually acted in, in any Shakespearean play, actually, other you than the producer. Yeah, the no, showrunner. So I was the. I was the. Technically, I was the treasurer of that festival. So I was. Okay. I was, I was the. I was in the financial in brains the body, behind basically. the scheme. Uh, yeah, and uh, good that it didn't. Good that I wasn't involved more than a year because you know I was riding by the the seat of my pants basically the whole way through. <laughs> but uh, it was a great experience, and it was my first foray into the world of business. Actually, this was obviously before I had graduated college or anything, so right, right. I hadn't ever really done any kind of work. So it was great. It was a great experience. Yeah. But um, point being, it's just like a cheat code to ticket sales. Yeah. yeah. Hundred yeah. percent, especially are, Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. yeah, and are we verging into like it being a bit of a muddied cliche, though? Right mm. to say something is Shakespearean, is it? I see your point, which is lazy. like, didn't he write about everything, basically? Right. And I think basically yes. Right. So I think you could pick any movie you've seen in the past like year, two years, and I guarantee you will find either a sonnet or a play of Shakespeare's or something that deals with that same theme yeah. or topic, right? Because he just, it really touched everything. He did comedies, tragedies, everything. So right. like, you you will struggle to find something that isn't covered somewhere in Shakespeare, I think. So I guess the postulation here, zoomed out, would be, is William Shakespeare the most influential character to ever grace arts and entertainment? I would definitely say he's automatically in the top five if not top three yeah, with your mozarts etc yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. i guess like but he's there, there is scholarly um conjecture that he, he may not have been one person and that it's actually like a a group mm. of writers who you know pulled together under that banner or whatever I or james patterson yeah and, yeah and he had rivals at the time who were almost as good as him and right. he, you know they, there's many theories as to like did he actually steal ideas from others etc so who, who knows yeah. all i can say is at the surface if you take him at his word that everything that is called today a shakespearean play is by a guy called william shakespeare he's an absolute insane genius and like beyond reproach and one of the best writers of all time so that's like at a minimum. And then, you know, who knows what the truth is, but we have to accept that that person has written a bunch of amazing stuff. Yeah. Did I ever tell you that I acted in Macbeth? You did not. Were you I Macbeth? Not. No? not once, but twice. So Whoa. the first time I was not Macbeth, okay. I was the messenger. I yeah. still remember my line. Yeah. I used to have trouble memorizing lines. Uh, so, But messenger has, I think, one line or two lines. Yes, right? yeah. and he comes in and he says, my lord, my lady, my lord, my lady, the king comes here tonight. Wow. And that showstopper, unbelievable standing ovation yeah, in the middle tears. of the play. You know, oh. Incredible. Wow. A few years later, though, in high school. You got the big seat. I got the big seat. I That's was a like, hard That's... one. Did you do, it was a full length production of Macbeth? No, it no, wasn't okay, a full okay. length, but yeah. it was. Uh, no, insane. You know, I was Macbeth. That is huge, though. A Jack Bauer inspired Macbeth. At the time, the show 24, 24 with yeah. for Sutherland was very big. Actually, not the worst idea I've ever heard. Like, yeah. I've seen many attempts to modernize Macbeth, you know, yeah. uh, one in a kitchen starring James McAvoy. But there that's, a, that's a pretty, pretty yeah. tasty one, yeah. Yeah, and that was, you know, kind of the, the culmin. I, I stopped on a mic drop, the culmination of my acting career. Yeah, of no. course. You always finish on a high. You've yeah. got to, right? A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to go a la De Niro and do 20 more years of film. Meet the Fockers, two, three, yeah. four, etc. cetera. Fun movies. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, but, but just, you know, below you know. them, uh, in a sense. <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Shakespeare, I think we'll be coming back to Shakespeare at least a few more times. I think we should. It, it yeah. is quite fascinating also then to touch upon like how much of it was actually his and to see all the the influences once you look for them it's super easy right it's insane yeah i think uh i've been gone from shakespeare a bit too long actually because like mm. i'd studied it a lot in school and then read a bit you know after that but then i'd say nothing in the past like five six seven years so yeah maybe it's time i pick up the, the complete works and get back into it from what i remember when we were in school what we really didn't like about it was a bit the difficulty in mm. reading the old english that's oh, insane right it's unbelievably hard yeah I remember like we we started Romeo and Juliet when I was like 14, 15 and we read the first page and we everyone unanimous who was like, what on earth is this? Yeah. I thought I spoke English. Like what? Right. This is this is not <laughs> exactly. Bad. But there is that magical moment then after a few days or weeks 
where you you don't know really what they're saying but you get the gist of what they're you're saying you're in the flow in the you're context like, and, yeah he's probably yeah. talking about this or mm, you know mm. and it, that's just like as a as a 15 year old newly introduced to this world you're just like whoa there's like a whole world of weird abstract complex plays that i don't i, I now understand but that i had no idea of you know yeah. so the world starts to kind of open up to you a bit but yeah amazing stuff yeah Amazing. And uh, we're going to move on after the break into the Google reviews. But before that, I also remember that at one point I also played Oedipus in Oedipus Rex, mm. where I had to stab my eyes out yeah. at the end. Tough, tough one to pull off to make really natural. Tough. Yeah. Like to go full method on it was so you've, really... Uh, you've done more classical acting than I have, I think. Like, well, let's uh, call it that. Never say never as well. Yeah. You could always retake your place on the stage. I could. Amdram is a thing. You can... Uh, Amdram. Yeah, yeah, amateur yeah. dramatics. You can join oh, Copenhagen, uh, Copenhagen Theatre Circle. I think they do plays. Yes, you think they'd have seen their in, stuff? Yeah. They would welcome all comers, I think, purely yeah. just to, to build up the numbers, they if nothing else. Numbers. No offense, but uh, <laughs> yeah, there's not that many people doing it. Uh, but I think you'd be warmly welcomed back to the stage. Great, great. We'll see whether we do that first or our A Lost in Postulation live show. That I would hope, I would I would really hope that the live show happens before, just, you know, knowing uh, the trajectories of both careers right now. I think we're more likely to to be uh, doing a live show. Sounds amazing. We but, better be. Uh, someday, someday. Good. Never say never. All right, listeners, we'll catch you after the break. Listeners, welcome back once again. And you just heard the uh, soothing tunes of Dr. Delight. We said we would look up who it is in the break. So enough said by Dr. Delight, who has, we just checked, an extensive discography on Spotify. So you can uh, you can go listen your heart out to, to Dr. Delight. He's got some great stuff and he has been serving us well. Massive shout out to the Doctor of Delights. We'd love to welcome you onto the podcast whenever you want. It feels like we already have. I feel like he's one of the team at this point. I wonder, does he have a PhD in delight or is he a, a mm. medical doctor or is he just like an academic doctor? We'll never yeah, know. Maybe, you know, kind of one of these uh, sous chefs. He's doctor of Turkish delights. Mm. The dessert. Yeah, yeah. You know, Self-appointed maybe. or yeah. he may have, yeah, right. maybe his own thing. As long as he's not, you know, Dr. Oz or one of those kind of like, you know, TV yeah. show uh, <laughs> Quote unquote doctor. Phonies. Hey, you know, okay, yeah. come on. You, know. you cut, a, cut a guy a break. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, not Dr. Oz. Didn't he run for the Senate sure or did. something? Yeah. He's not done, I think. he's uh, He did run for Senate, didn't get it. And I think he's probably going to do a presidential bid right. probably in four years or something like that. And I think he was from Jersey and he ran for yeah. a seat in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania and yeah. he was giving a stump speech where he mentioned a supermarket chain that they doesn't even have in Pennsylvania. Exactly. So wonderful. Uh, he, he just like played the numbers, knew knew he had a better shot in Pennsylvania and yeah, just did not work And out. he lost to our other guy who was like incapacitated uh, for, for some time. Yeah, had exactly. a stroke or The whatever. big guy, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name. Yeah. John, John Fetterman? Fetterman, Something yeah, like that. yeah. yeah and he wears, he wears like Carhartt jeans when he's yeah. in office like he's insane. But uh, anyway, anyway. Your taste of American politics. <laughs> Absolutely. That's all you get this episode. Although, never say never, we may come back to it because it's time once again to get into a, uh, a segment that we've really tried once and we really enjoyed. And I think there's a lot more in the tank for this particular mm. segment. So we're talking about Google reviews. Now, the world of Google reviews is manifold. It, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of reviews out there. Definitely. If you sum up the whole world, right? Google Maps has already mapped much of the world via Street View and almost every establishment on Google Maps has a review function. Some might argue it's too much. Maybe it's a bit, it, it's embracing an overly critical side of ourselves that we don't necessarily like. Mm. I would actually potentially subscribe to that. But in any case, here we are. Every establishment in the world has Google reviews. Yes, they do. And we like Google reviews. Big fans, as yeah. we've detailed in, in previous episodes of the podcast. Exactly. We've both used them, I think, for successfully finding good places to eat. Mm -hmm. We've avoided places that might have been a, a bullet dodged or worse, right. you know, a, a stomach uh, bug dodged, for example. <laughs> But in any case, one thing we like to do is talk about the one-star reviews in particular. So there's no shortage, shortage of these <laughs> online. So finding them is not the challenge. Finding entertaining ones is more of a challenge. So I went around a little bit. I, I started Googling very mundane stuff and I, I just did it anywhere in the world and just kind of saw what I could find. I love it. I honed in on, homed in, I should say, on America. So we're going to the US of A here. Oh, yes. To start with. Now, the industry that we are dealing with, because we don't want to do like, you know, we're not, we're not here to do the Rockefeller Center or, or, you know. Nah, not mundane enough. No, we need to do something properly mundane. So we are going into the wonderful world 
of dry cleaning. Dry cleaning. And yeah. what state, city, where, where are you so taking me? We are going, we are visiting the famous, the, the state famous, perhaps <laughs> $2.99 cleaners. Oh, who are based in Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston, South Carolina. Not to be confused with the exact same named $2.99 cleaners based in Norwalk, Connecticut. Different place. <laughs> so, <laughs> much better reviews from that one. So just to be clear, the name of the establishment is the $2.99 cl- cleaners. $2.99 okay, cleaners you're showing is the name. They have a sign outside and they proudly boast that most items are $2.99. Okay, so it's $2.99 per, per yeah. item. Which you All could, right. By the way, that's a good price off the top. That's right? a very good price. When I think that I avoid dry cleaners here mm-hmm. in Copenhagen because it's not even close to that price. Yeah. Exactly. Now, keep that in mind because there may be a reason why okay. it's only 2 dollars 99. Uh, so let's get into it. I'm going to give you a, a selection of the reviews, but their overall score for $2.99 cleaners in, uh, not Connecticut, in Charleston, South Carolina, mm-hmm. on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard. Their total okay. score is a measly 3.5. Ooh, okay. Which for dry cleaners is quite bad because if you, most dry cleaners dry clean stuff and come away with a five star because it's like they did what they right. said they would do, you know? And you'd have an abundance of choice usually within the neighborhood, you'd imagine. You would think, right? Yeah. So first review here for seven months ago from Donna Penn. Donna is not happy. She gave it a one star. She says, and I'm going to, I'm going to keep the typos in the grammatical typos in, because these are her words. I, I don't want to misquote Donna. She says, I brought three dress to be cleaned, came to put up my dresses. Only two was done. The said, come with me. We walked to the back where I saw my dress in a bucket. So you're with me so far? Her dress is in a bucket <laughs> in the back. behind so, the curtain. Yeah, come with me. Her dress is in a bucket, right? She goes to the back. She says, in brackets, my dress was white and black dress, white to top and black the bottom. Okay. Close brackets. He told me that the black had bleed into the white. Oh. Comma. I was shocked at first. Then I said to him, this is brand new dress I wore one time <laughs> and it is ruined, comma. He said, it isn't his fault. I need to take it to where I bought. I said, no, you are responsible because you ruined it. He proceeds to me <laughs> that he is going to soak it for a few days and kept telling how he ruined it. In said bucket. Yeah, he's going, I'm going to soak it a few days. Don't worry about it. It's all, it's all good. I'm going to soak that problem right out. Don't you worry. He proceeded to me that he is going to soak it for a few days and kept telling how he ruined it. He said, if got to send it off, it will cost me $50. I'm not going to allow you in here again. Hello, who want to come there after this experience? <laughs> what? Thank you, Donna. <laughs> Donna Penn for that one, sorry. Oh, wow, Donna. So, um, lots to unpack here. <laughs> there's a lot to unpack. Um, Dress in a bucket. <laughs> just some, some clarifying questions. Sure. Not that you're necessarily going to be able to clarify them. Yeah. But does he think that by soaking it in the bucket, the, the tide of the bleeding through is going to roll back? Is that okay. the working assumption? Cards on the table. I think he's trying to buy himself a few days here. Just and to, he being the owner yeah. of the establishment. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's got, a, he's got an angry Donna in the back room with him. And he's like, how can I make Donna go away for a few days? Right. And he's like, I'm just going to tell her I'm soaking it for a few okay. days. You know? I mean, I appreciate a bit the transparency. I mean, he took her to the back of Didn't the shop. Didn't have to do that. Right? Didn't, Didn't have, have to, to do, do that. that. Um, and a bit of the, the problem solving here on his toes, the owner, you know, yeah. thinking I'm going to soak it for a few days. Yeah, uh, see what uh, happens. I, yeah, Can't exactly. Get any worse. Yeah. Um, and then Donna, um, not wanting to take it back to the store because apparently that will cost her $50. I, I'm a bit confused. So <laughs> he has said to her that he can send it somewhere and it'll cost $50. Oh, he can send it somewhere yeah. to... Yeah roll back the uh, to do something i guess i think what he's thinking probably is he can take 50 dollars from her and then maybe find the dress somewhere else Mm -hmm. i'm guessing like i i do not know the the ins and outs Ah, okay i'm purely postulating here but donna is not coming back that was seven months ago and uh yeah i don't think she's uh she's swinging by anytime soon. okay this is interesting because i mean who knows Maybe it was a really bad dress or maybe a dress that wasn't supposed to be taken to a dry cleaner to begin oh, with. Yeah, but but then, you would think... It shouldn't be in a bucket, though. Like if, it, no. if it's a dry cleaner, like it should be dry. It right. should be in the machine with its you know, special and, chemicals. And this bucket is a wet bucket. It looks, like it's a, it looks like... It sounds like... I saw my dress in a bucket. 
There's mm. usually there's no bucket involved with dry cleaning. There, there just, shouldn't be. There shouldn't be. Especially a wet bucket. You know, so, maybe like a laundry basket type yeah, of bucket. Yeah, but. yeah, but they're not like a watertight bucket. So, so Donna's not happy, right? Now, you you seem to be a little bit on the side of the owner here. You're kind of like, well, you know, maybe mm. it's a bad dress. So I think I'm just we trying to give him a fair shout, right? Because he's starting from a one star review, right? So we gotta see Wait. if we justify Donna's review or if you know. Uh, let's see. In I think case we're ever in Charleston. In case it could well happen, we do our live live tour on the road. True. We end up there. Geez, that would be a disaster actually if Donna came along to the show. But um, <laughs> sorry, no Donna. Questions from the audience. But in fairness, Donna, you put that review up in public, so I mean, yeah. don't don't come with us, you know, complaining about reading it out. But in any case, uh, maybe we should take one more one star just to just to hear from the same place. That's the same only place. way we'll oh, yeah, be yeah. able to oh, benchmark. I can yeah. I can go all day with these one oh, stars. Please so do them. I'm only picking the the cream of the crop here. So Vincent Williams has 12 reviews so a pretty respected reviewer in the area right yeah. uh, 10 months ago one star now for this 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 review has some caps lock parts so oh no i'll just uh i'll, I'll read a little bit louder but i'll move away from the microphone so that you <laughs> so that you know that it's caps lock okay. okay so i have used this cleaners for about three months now starts out as a great place the last few weeks not so great mm. i have had to return because someone overslept I don't know what that means because he doesn't talk about it again in the review. But anyway, I had to refer. Mm. I, I've had to return because someone overslept. I took a shirt in to see if they could remove a stain. When mm. I received the shirt back, the tape used to mark the stain was still there. <laughs> Leads me to ask the question, and here comes the caps lock: Was the shirt ever cleaned? <laughs> When I tried Fair to question. ask, yeah, really good question from Vincent. When I tried to ask that question, I was told I had to wait for a manager who was busy with another upset customer. Vincent really throwing them under a bus here. Yeah, I mean, stick to your own customer experience, Vincent, because like, you know, <laughs> let them leave a one-star review if they're upset. Anyway, I decided to leave the shirt and take my business elsewhere. Customers of this business, please beware, caps lock. So something is not right with uh, 299 laundry here well i hope he didn't have to prepay the 299 for that because it seems that they didn't do anything many there. of the customers yeah. actually have prepaid and all that all they've actually I, I won't read all of these but in many of the reviews the customers are saying can i just have my stuff back and they're like no absolutely not okay. i don't know why so okay it's uh it's truly insane they, I, uh, I I really enjoy it. And, and maybe we should give a link or something because you can just read these one stars. Yeah, this I have, is immense. I have, I'll do maybe some quick fire ones. Just please, to, please do. So then I'll have the full picture and I'll be able to to properly judge this. Exactly. So let's do Brad Mitchell. Four years ago, four, uh, he's also one star. Absolutely horrible cleaning service and customer service. I sent two brand new shirts to them right out the packaging and they sent back the two shirts with burn marks and stains oh, all over them. Come on. I never even wore the shirts. This is great. The person at the front blamed the damage on, quote, something in my car. <laughs> she didn't even have the decency to refund the amount for the cleaning. Oh, wow. Beware of these cleaners. They will damage your clothing and then have the goal to blame it on you. Okay. That, that takes bravery. This right one there. kind of rounds it out for me. I think the situation we have here uh, is a group of people yeah. that opened a dry cleaners without... Mm -hmm any knowledge of how to operate potentially the machinery in there or not caring mm -hmm. um, and or inherited it, passed it, passed it on, whatever. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah. I have a theory actually. Some of the reviews say the same thing, which is like I dropped in the clothes and they came back dirty. But right. I think this place literally doesn't clean the clothes because it's two ninety nine, mm, right? Right. I think they just iron the clothes and right. give it back to you folded and go, there you go, dry clean. So maybe they don't even have that heavy industrial machinery which would be very big costs and depreciation yeah. etc exactly maybe what they do is as you said maybe they inherited it right they have a machine one dry cleaner machine and they point to it to the customer and go there you go there's the machine they haven't turned it on in like three years mm. they just go yeah we'll take your clothes there they throw it, in the, throw it on the ironing board right. give it back a day later and everyone's some of the comments the five star comments are like super fast service couldn't believe how quick you know i, I think they're not being cleaned that's a great shout and the scheme probably works and I'll tell you why it probably works mm -hmm. is because I think no matter what as a dry cleaner you will always get new customers oh yeah right and if I'm living in that neighborhood and I see hey there's a dry cleaner there I'm probably not checking the Google review first probably as I not. would for my corner restaurant and it's 299 so and you're like look what are they going to do I mean like it's going to come back somewhat clean you would think 
Right. But uh, in this scenario, I think we have a scam on our hands. We have like a proper... Uh, I think we we might need to send some correspondence out to Charleston. To this is the problem. I wish we had listeners in South Carolina, in Charleston, that we could just say, please swing by and just see what's what's the deal. Do they have a dry cleaning machine? Can you see the machine operating? Because these are the, like, we can't find this out ourselves unless we fly there. But I would love to know. Yeah. Two ninety nine. I mean, the the one that really did it for me, I think, is just getting a shirt with the sticker back. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> just like this is to mark the stain, and it's like the stain is still there, and the sticker is still there. Now Uh-oh. we don't know if they took the stain off and then mm. put the sticker back on because maybe they thought you know they wanted yeah. to keep this as a souvenir. That would be harsh. Of our then service from the for the customer. Then I feel like giving them one star for that is pretty harsh because it's like okay, right. sorry, there's a sticker, just take it right. off. You know, but I, I guess I feel like there's more. Yeah, yeah. like. Uh, Wow. Okay. So steer clear of the two ninety nine cleaner in Charleston, South Carolina. Definitely. If you and want anything actually dry cleaned. Exactly. I I can only echo the words of these reviewers. I mean, just avoid, avoid, avoid. And in the words of Brenda Bennett, another reviewer, she finishes caps lock. Poor, poor. I do plan to take them to court. To court. Yeah. Well, that's something. Being that it's in the U.S., that could Small actually claims. happen. Yeah. Sue them. I mean, do it. So yeah, if you're ever in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, just do try one of the other very cheap cleaners because I think you'll do better than $2.99 cleaners. Yes. Well, there you go. So. Unreal. The I mean, wonderful world of Google reviews. Has, the wonderful uh, world of Google reviews. It goes on. And we we got one sent in from a listener, which oh. introduced us to a new dynamic of the Google reviews. And that's the owner of the establishment firing back. One of my favorite things to, one to see. one-star reviews. Love those. And it can completely shift your perception. Because sometimes I'm reading the one-star and I'm like, what kind of place is this? Yeah. And then the manager claps back with an absolute banger. Yeah. And you're like, well, okay. Yeah. So yeah, interesting to hear what we have here. Yes. So... From the restaurant Mr. Chopin in our beloved Brussels, an Afghani restaurant in our beloved Brussels. Fantastic. Yes. Love Brussels famously. I do Capital love Brussels. Of chaos. Absolutely. This is a review by Bijan Nero. Again, I'll read it with the typos uh, and whatnot. I just went in with five friends. We traveled two hours to get to this location. Whoa, where were they traveling? <laughs> Maybe like, just the Brussels no. traffic to be Yeah, honest. exactly. We, we went from like 300 meters away <laughs> at Russia. Yeah, but, me. you know, it's a destination. Yeah. Clearly. Okay. Uh, he's also, you can list the price at the top. And mm. he said this uh, lunch was 100 plus euros. For four people? Yeah. Okay. With that's five cool. friends. So five. six people. Oh, okay. Ah, that's mm, like... We're in decent territory yeah. if it's divided by six. Right. Let's see. Let, yeah. Let's see where this is going. Is this one star, by the way? or One star. Okay. okay. And he goes on. Honestly speaking, lovely restaurants, but the food tastes really, really bad. And the rice is super oily. So what's lovely? He said lovely. <laughs> oh, you mean it's like the decor, I yeah. guess? Or... And, and, and we go on. Okay. And all of the food was microwaved. Very cold. How does he know? <laughs> this is interesting. I want, I want proof. Okay. Or, or cold. Yeah. We, we didn't have a good experience at all. I would highly recommend changes to take place at this restaurant. We paid 120 euros mm. and definitely not worth 20 euros. Whoa. Go at your own risk. 20 euros divided by six people. I mean, maybe McDonald's. Be, but... uh, yeah, you get a chicken nuggets each or something. Yeah. And he doesn't say don't go. He says go at your own risk. I think interesting approach. That, this is such a strange all over the place review. Like, because he, he's like, in one minute he's like, lovely place, absolutely lovely, horrible food, hated it. Uh, it was microwaved, it was freezing cold. Which was it? Like, you know, come and on. The rice was super oily. Oily, though. How does rice even get oily? It's, you, you put it in the water, you just pull it absorb in. the oil. Okay. Yeah. All of the food was microwaved, mm. very cold. I, now, I never like when people say this in reviews because you didn't see them microwave it, you know? You can definitely, you can suspect that it was microwaved, right. but you weren't standing in the it's kitchen. It's not definitive. Yeah. yeah, like you can definitely suspect it, but if he's saying, oh, they for sure microwaved it, it's like, well, unless you were standing there, they may have thrown it in an oven. Like, you know, uh, anyway, sorry, I, I shouldn't be no, cutting down too much. That's yeah. very fair. Okay. Um, now, the reply from the owner okay. of the restaurant, almost instantaneously, because they come from the same time period. Wow. Thank you for your comment. Always good to start. You were five people. Extremely rude with the personnel, with the personal, he writes, oh, okay. yeah. and without having respect. Oh. We don't need scum, please. <laughs> okay. We have enough respected customer. Okay. By the way, semicolon, BTW, semicolon. Mm-hmm. We don't have microwave. Exactly. It is not like the snack you eat always. Oh, thank you. Oh. 
that is uh, the sickest of burns from a restaurateur <laughs> who huge. like if if a restaurant owner says you you microwave food that's like a sick burn in their world you yeah. know whoa he did not hesitate it really ramped up i feel like the word scum really brought this one into into the stratosphere you know and it's sandwiched by two thank yous because yeah. he starts with thank you for your comment and mm. he ends with a thank you sign off so interesting you know Shit I think sandwich, we would this call is, it. This is performative. This is uh, the vibe he's trying to put out to the to you and me reading this is like, huh, look at this guy. I'm going to, uh, this doesn't bother me. Water off a duck's back. Mm. Thanks for your review. By the way, you're a big chubby lardo who <laughs> microwaves food. Right? That's <laughs> kind of, aggressive. yeah. And then finish on a thank you. Because he's like, eh, but then again, I'm not bothered, you know. That is, mm, it, it raises more questions than it answers for me. Because sometimes the manager response is like, let me tell you what really happened here, you know? And it's like, you guys walked in, didn't order anything, and were told we were full and walked out. So your one star review about the food is meaningless. You know, like, mm-hmm, the, you, you mm-hmm. get, like, a, a bit more information. In this case, he's, like, not debating the fact that the food was bad, actually. He's like, yeah, you, okay. But uh, you were rude and without respect. So now, when you are in Brussels, mm. and, you know, your hotel happens to be close by, you're looking for a restaurant, and the aggregate reviews on this maybe are fine, and you do your usual lowest filter, mm. and this conversation thread comes up. Mm. What do you do? Are you so intrigued to figure out and get to the bottom of the yeah. mystery that you actually go to the place? I'll stick my head in the door for sure. Uh, because... Lovely restaurant. It's a lovely restaurant. I just want to see that, first of all. But also... I have definitely found with these carnage reviews like this, where it's like, it's completely off the deep end. When you just stick your head in and just look, you can feel the vibe. Maybe, maybe this is prejudice mm. or, or like conditioning on my part. Right. I'm, I'm expecting it. But I have definitely found in many parts of the world where I, I see a place that has such bad reviews and I walk in just to be like, come on, it can't be that bad. And you walk in and you're just like, okay. The yeah. aura. Yeah, the vibe. Just yeah. it's so bad. And like someone looks at you and goes like, Oh, you want to eat or or what? You know, and you're just like, okay, I see, I see the problem right. here. You know, right. like, and you leave straight away. So for this reason, actually, next time I'm in Bay XL, I will uh, actually probably swing by just to. I think we, check I it think out. we might have to. We have a, a man on the ground in Brussels. We got to send him in. Yeah. yeah, at least we're not saying go there, and, and we're not going to reimburse him for eating there. Right. Just to be clear, we're on a budget here, but we do want him to <laughs> maybe at least stick his head in the door yeah. and just you know see what the vibe is like. Scope out for a microwave around the back, potentially. You know what would be really fun, though? If we were there, would be to walk in and try and talk to the owner and show him the review and be like, what was the story here, you know? Right. Like, just get a bit more info because he probably has a story behind it. He'd be like, those guys were complete assholes. Get him on the microphone. Exactly. Get him him an episode, yeah. Unbelievable. Amazing stuff. So, go at your own risk to Mr. Chopin Restaurant. Uh, They say thank you a lot, at least. They're at least grateful for the reviews, no matter what. I do love why well, it's such a it's such a spicy world of reviews. This yeah. like you know you can really find owners accusing people of all sorts. They're like, interesting how you leave a review and yet you are the owner of a restaurant three doors down from mine. You know, like right, right, they right. really uh, they it's really a war. do not hold back. Yeah, but it is it's yeah, crazy stuff. The world of Google reviews now, Neil. Time permitting, I have one more. Okay. It's a bit less mundane. I'm going to take you to uh, a massive tourist attraction. Okay. No, this is interesting. Yeah. We haven't been here yet. This yeah. is interesting. And I, I've collected about three reviews from okay. this place. One star reviews from actually the last month. This is a very visited place. I feel like I can actually guess where this is. Is it Il Colosseo? No, it's not. But that but, would be a good one. It's in I've that heard, stratosphere. Because I've heard basically yeah. that in the last two months or so, the Colosseum has gotten really bad, like even worse than before. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, sorry, go on. Neil. We're going to La Ville Lumière, Paris, uh, uh, La Tour Eiffel. La Tour Eiffel, quoi. <laughs> that, is, that is huge. Never been there myself, would you believe? No. Yeah. You've been to Paris? No. Oh, wow. Well, I've been, I have, I've geographically been within Paris on our way to Disneyland as a child. Right. But I've never actually, as a tourist, as an adult, been there. Um, yeah, but that's okay. Between it is okay. the trash and the strikes. Yeah, and, uh, it doesn't call out to me. Sorry oh. to our Parisian. My wife loves it. I'm not yeah, a huge fan, yeah, yeah. but you know. It has its charm, I'm sure. Yeah, sure it does. Anyway, well, let's get let's into get that into charm. Yeah. <laughs> One star review from a month ago, Samad Golzari, who is qualified as a local guide with the Orange mm-hmm. Star 247 reviews. Okay, he knows his stuff. Then. Yeah. Now we're getting into conspiracy territory. Uh-oh. Two months in advance, I had to pay almost 50 euros per ticket to buy the type of the tickets that I absolutely had no intention to buy in order to take my family to the top floor. 50 euro each? No. Yeah. Really? Per ticket, he said. Whoa. The reason for that, 
semicolon. Uh All the tickets are sold out two months in advance. But are they really? All caps. Or is it a game of yours to make people buy tickets with more expensive options? Anyway, the tower is nice, especially the lighting at night, but not really a big deal. And he would know. And he would know. He's a local local guide. guide. I actually kind of share... Okay, let's come back to the conspiracy, but at least the point is like when you're standing on the Eiffel Tower, you can't see the Eiffel Tower, right? You're seeing the rest of Paris. (laughs) So actually like going up it is not like that exciting because like it's it's one of the only places in Paris where you 100% won't see the Eiffel Tower. Right. You might see the Arc de Triomphe. I don't know. I haven't been there, but I'm just saying like... Yeah, you do. You're probably better off going up a tall building nearby and getting the view of the Eiffel also, Tower. That would be a better experience, probably. That's one of the big New York hacks, exactly. actually. For top example, of the rock. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh-huh, top uh-huh. of the Rock instead of top of Empire State Building. Or, exactly, yeah. exactly. But my going back to the conspiracy theory, I think he has uncovered a very common business practice, though, which is like false scarcity or, you know, yeah. artificial scarcity, as they Could call be. it. Could be, yeah. I would not be surprised. This world of South Europe tourism, like, and especially, as we <laughs> talked about, Il Coliseo and, like, Forum Romano, you've got, like, all these ones, that, and the Vatican, same one, right? He's pinching his fingers together and I, waving I, them in my uh, face. Maybe I shouldn't, I should not. Uh, <laughs> I should be careful of uh, cultural appropriation here. But I am so done with these, like, three months in advance, get your ticket for the Vatican, yeah. show up on the day and you've got people saying, tickets, you need tickets, right. here, you know. A free tour guys, you know, guy with an umbrella saying, I can get you in, skip the line. Like, whoa, it is so bad. The original then, tourist trip. I hate it. Like yeah. it, it, and I have never, the more I've done them in the last say 10 years, increasingly I'm like, waste of time, waste of time. Shouldn't have done that, waste of time. It can you know? ruin your entire experience of a city. Literally, I can't think of one. Here's a good question. Can you think of one that you've done though let's say top tier tourist attractions where you've been like, actually that was worthwhile. And you're talking, you know, monuments, museums. I really do mean S tier. I mean, the ones that when you say a country, it's like the first one that comes up, you know, in your mind, in in pop culture. When it's the first one, I think almost never, Never. because I mean, if if you take that into account, like, there's so much beauty, for example, in in Rome yeah. outside of that Colosseum to exactly. just walk around. In Copenhagen, it would be the Little Mermaid, which we know come is on. so disappointing. Yeah, one of the worst. The yeah. mannequin piss in Brussels, which we have a laugh about all the time, but yeah. come on. At least you're not having to pay for those. That's true. That is true. Uh, but you do, you're paying yeah. in time to get yeah. to the Little Mermaid. Right. Even in Paris itself, going to the Louvre to see the Mona Lisa and just everybody in front of it taking selfies. And it's, uh, yeah, I think you're on to something. I just, I, I'm interested if the listeners have ever been to any, I, I've heard the Grand Canyon is worth it, actually. That's so one. there's yeah. the nat, there's some natural remote ones. So for example, for me, Machu Picchu. Worth it. Oh, yeah. 100%. Okay. The whole trip to Peru worth it Whoa. just for the first sight of yeah, Machu Picchu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So there are, so natural stuff we say, yes. Yeah. I, I can yeah. counter that though by saying when I was in Iceland, uh, if you like waterfalls, look no further than Iceland because there's about 10,000 right. of them. But on your trip to Iceland, you'll see Thingvellir National Park where there's a, a waterfall. And then you'll see Geysir and you'll see all the ones on the Golden right. Circle. But you quickly start to realize, aha, uh-huh, okay, this is another waterfall. And then right. over the week and the, whatever amount of time, you're like, okay, we'll, we'll go see the waterfall. But if it's just another waterfall, I'm going to be pretty, you know, disappointed and it, that's that's really all you get not, right, to, right. not to rag on yeah, Iceland too much, but it's you you get very used to yeah. waterfalls basically and yeah. especially if you see the big one first then you're like all the other waterfalls are just like right. okay they, these are also waterfalls yeah. so i think tourists we have to be very careful not to overhype these tourist attractions and be like it's going to change my life it's well, going to be amazing and it's also like going on a on a safari in south africa botswana whatever mm do it for three, four days and not the extent of your two-week holidays exactly. because after a while, it's the same animals behaving right. in the same way. You know, unless you're the National Geographic photographer, you've probably had enough after We've a few days. We've been to the zoo. I know <laughs> people say, and I haven't been on safari, so like, sorry, and I'm, oh, not, man. I'm not trying to minimize Ruffling anyone's... Ruffling feathers. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All I'm going to say is, I love the zoo, right? You even go to the zoo at night. I am. Uh, I've been I'm a zoo fan. When all we've, the animals were sleeping been. and the lights were off. That was brilliant. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah who'd have thought those animals <laughs> sleep at night? It was uh, a shock to us all. But uh, the zoo is great. There's areas of Copenhagen Zoo that you can see from outside as well. So free yeah. zoo. I saw the elephants. You see the elephants. Yeah, yeah. I used to walk there when I lived uh, in the neighborhood. My yeah. run goes by there whenever I run, which there is you. once in a blue moon. And uh, I, of you course, see the elephants have every to pause my run, not because I'm tired, but because I have to just see the elephants. That's uh, the only reason. Anyway, long story short, I love the zoo it's great it doesn't cost much i can go there from my own house i can be there in 10 minutes do i want to go see the same exact animals in the wild no that's 
that's oh maybe maybe mm. this is too spicy i think i can bring you around on that one okay, but on. first yeah. back to the zoo that are the queues at the eiffel tower oh yeah this review from roger burns what a waste of time <laughs> You, was that caps lock? Was that no, all? but no. exclamation point. Right, okay. Use your money and time to get a great meal and buy a picture of it. This is from your school of thought. Mm-hmm. Paris is a disgusting city. Okay. Colon, go to London or Scotland and mm. save yourself from wasting time and money to be disappointed. He had me until go to London because like, London is not, parts of London are very nice, but yeah. like, yeah. The food is divine if you can get past the smell outside. Ooh. I'll leave you some pictures to decide for yourself. Notre Dame is under construction and won't be able to tour for years. Mm. I'll never go back. So this, he did it under the Eiffel Tower, but he did an all-encompassing like review Paris. for the city of Paris. I think he was in a bad place when he wrote this review. It no seems offense. That way. He's, he's supposed to be on holiday having a go good time. Go to London or Scotland and save. I mean, ah. who, and who is this? Who's his target? I guess he's American, right? Or Roger Burns. I Burns B Y R N S. I think he might even be a Scot. Yeah, I think he's Scottish. Yeah, yeah. That would be my my Roger postulation. Burns. Or Roger. <laughs> I would say Roger loves Edinburgh and compares everywhere he goes to Edinburgh and it's just like it's not not quite Edinburgh. It's apparently fond of London though too. Yeah, yeah. it's a city. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a city on the scale of Paris, that's for sure. Yeah. And they speak English there. Yeah. Can bloody speak. Yeah. Exactly. Th- there's one point here which I think we can extrapolate. The food is divine if you can get past the smell outside. This is a big thing for me. Mm. Eating something in surroundings that don't smell nice can ruin what you're eating and Waste, for me it's yeah. a lot actually with the the person at the table next to me smoking a cigarette yeah, 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 and it's like that. why do i have to have that as part of my meal agree you know? and yeah. uh, you can tell i've never been to paris because my next question is does it actually smell around like properly i guess in, like, in, in the moments when the garbage guys are on strike which is about often. once a month in yeah, paris yeah, yeah it's so you not really so like you can walk around Paris and probably get a stink like uh, maybe not all the time but I think you can depending wow. on the moment and the and the neighborhood and yeah not, not being sold on it here to be honest no 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 so the final review and Melody takes us gives us a bit of a different perspective sounds here. French still Could one be local, star though. Yeah. Melody U five reviews okay. from two weeks ago oh, wow. not as nice and not as spectacular as I thought scammer everywhere yeah scammer on the sidewalk playing the cops trick and scam tourist money yeah and surprisingly no police walking around in this area not safe at all mm-hmm. they scam me 200 euros and no. in just a split second they are all in a group of people pretend to be tourists no. they trick so many people and stole from so many tourists three people have marked this helpful and she even puts pictures of one of the scammers circling Ooh. him, I assume without his permission. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> the gloves are off by Melody. Yeah. This is a pseudo-police report here. But So I, I, the only question remains, she was scammed 200 euro. Did she play the three cup game? Because you just don't play the three cup game. And, like, and that's where Melody, I think, loses a lot of her credibility. This why is the thing. are you indulging the scammers? Melody. And why are you wagering 200 euros? This it's so I have huge questions here because like it's the way a casino you've seen these scams before you've like seen them in person have you all the time yeah never participated once it's so obvious like you know <laughs> they do it so someone bets and they double their money and they're like oh cool you know yeah. and then they just wait for you to go yeah. and it's just like come on like it's it's obviously rigged like your money is gone it's it's basically theft you know so Melody um, not very well traveled is she Melody no it might have been her first rodeo but then again she's in Paris like so she she has gone to the number one most visited tourist uh, attraction in the world so okay uh, maybe it is her first rodeo but in in any case, Melody, and for all listeners who are on the on the fence about this, do not ever do any gambling at all, ever, outside of uh, well, a casino. And even in a casino, you can probably put it. <laughs> yeah. But certainly not in on the casino, side of the road. At least do the blackjack table instead of the roulette. Exactly. And know? the same goes, by the way, a quick travel tip. If anyone ever talks to you for any reason ever in any tourist destination, <laughs> just keep walking. Like, stop. If they, if they put an armband on your wrist and say their daughter was just born and they blah, 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 just no thank you, keep walking. No thank yeah. you, keep walking. You'd be surprised how many people are got, are stung by this. If you just sit in like outside the Duomo in Milan or something and just oh, watch, I know. just watch like, and, and then you'll see it in like two seconds. Somebody there is, must be a market for them to thrive, right? Oh, 100%. This is thought. why I'm saying it because yeah. it's like, you would think we all know better, right? But I'm saying it because these guys are there every single day making bank off this yeah. and, and many scams like it. So please, please, please just have your wits about you. Like, come on, it's... Yeah. So it is a self-fulfilling prophecy where Melody, you're complaining about the scammers everywhere. 
Mm -hmm. But you are enabling the scammers Shouldn't to thrive. Even the money, Maddie. And if you really thought you were about to double your $200, that is a bit on you, I'm afraid. Yeah. Like, there's no honor among thieves here. And if they're at the side of the road running a gambling operation illegally, it's highly likely they're not going to pay out when you win, which you're not going to. So not 100% on Melody's side. Also, don't think the Eiffel Tower deserves that particular critique. It's the Eiffel getting Tower, all the heat of Paris here. Yeah, I feel like the architect and, you know, the people who actually made the tower didn't have that in mind. Like, this wasn't part no. of the original construction, you know. So I, I wouldn't level that critique at the Eiffel Tower. But it seems like people are using the Eiffel Tower to be like their Paris punching bag, basically. Right. Where they're like, this was bad, but also everything else was bad. So right. don't like that. Yeah, I think we need to make the municipality aware because they're they're having a bit of a PR issue potentially. Hundred percent. Although yeah. I doubt they're in risk. Imagine if like when when is the day going to come when people are like, eh, no Eiffel Tower for me? Like you just no, true. You just bigger have to. issues in Paris, right? Than that is the, for sure. The the cup guys here. Retirement age for one. Yeah. yeah. Would you? You would never do it. Wager, you know, a <laughs> dollar on the cup game. <laughs> I mean, like. The only reason I might do it is just to try and catch a glimpse of how they cheat, right? Right. Because this this cup uh, cup game is is fully rigged. Like, just to be clear, if anyone was in doubt, it's not like it's not like oh, you have a one and third chance. Like, they slide the ball out under from underneath the shell, and then they guarantee that you won't find the thing. So it's like right. so there is no ball anymore. Yeah, yeah. So purely from a like a former uh, former magician nerd slight interest that of I have, of course, among many other things. But I would be interested just to see the sleight of hand to see how good they are at it. Like, you know, right. probably these same guys are good at pickpocketing and other things as well. So they're, they're probably hey. good. Hey, no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, ostensibly, these, if they're happy to scam people one way, they're probably happy to do it another. But like, right. uh, I would like to just, for one So euro, you don't think they're niche specialists? So the, the cup guys are really specialized in that? You think they're more like scammer generalists? I think yeah. it's probably very easy that once you go down this route, right it's a slippery mm. slope where you're like well i'm just running a game and if people want to take part that's on that's on them right yeah. that, that's how you would justify it to yourself and then you're like well i'm just i'm just rustling around a pocket and if i find something that's about that's on them you know you you could start to do this like moral justification it's really like the call centers in sorry to sorry to dump wow, one we're so, really branching out no no but it, it, it really like there's some great content online for this uh the call center scam call centers predominantly in india but in other countries as well not just india but the people who operate those have often been caught and then interviewed by the likes of Jim Browning on, on YouTube, a really mm -hmm. great guy who who catches scammers. And he often asks them, like, do you feel good about this job that you do? Like, you call people all day and try to steal money from them. And they're like, yeah, but I have a hard too. Like, I, I have no money. Like, this is the only way to make money. They really have, like, tricked themselves into saying, this is fine, morally yeah. fine. So my point to your question was, like, do you really think they do other types? And I'm like, I'm sure they do. Like, they these are people who have found a way to justify to themselves and to feel good about it and get up every day and do it. So probably they're like, yeah, man, what's what's the problem? I'm, I need to get mine, you know? The world's a tough place. I'm, uh, it's, it's tough out there. I need to get money, you know? So I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be totally shocked. I'll put it that way. Wow. Well, wow. there you go. Instead Jeez. of the Eiffel Tower, you are perched upon the ivory tower of judgment and <laughs> sensitivity. Fine high horse I've got here. Um, but yeah, no, and it's no, all postulation, I'm, isn't it? It's all, it, uh, it is all postulation. Um, Neil, that's where we land on the Google reviews for this episode. So fun, my God. And yeah. it's like an endless well. So yeah. I would love to encourage the listeners, if you know of any absolute banger Google reviews or places that have been inundated for one reason or another, we would love to hear all about them. Please send them through. Any other parting shot, Neil, before we go? Not that I can think of. I think uh, just a big thank you once again to all the listeners. We've had some great reactions, feedback, listens. We see the streams ticking up. So it's all great to see and we're, we're delighted to see it. So keep those listens coming and uh, the feedback always welcome. And we look forward to, uh, to bringing you along for another postulation soon. Enjoy the summer vibes, listeners. Until next time.